a million wallets on Solana was recently given the WEN meme coin for free. Now, four of my wallets were eligible, and hey, who doesn't like free money, right? But you see, WEN isn't just an ordinary meme coin, it's many things. WEN is new technology, a token created by breaking an NFT poem into a trillion pieces using a brand new Solana NFT standard. When was the final test run for the Jupe token launch, the biggest airdrop in Solana history, by Jupiter, the biggest DeFi platform on Solana, and one of the biggest innovators in the space? And when is one of the most recognizable memes in crypto? Now in this video, we'll dive into the story behind when, we'll look at fractional NFTs, how they work, what makes when a potential blue chip meme coin, and what all of this could mean for the price of when going into the future. We'll do some projections using market cap, price ratios, and relative market dominance under different market conditions. Now, I don't do videos on meme coins often, but when has lit up the Solana community, and you need to know why. So let's dive in. So to understand the WEN meme token, we need to string together a few things. There's Jupiter, the Jupe token, the Let's F and Go launch pad, WEN culture, and also fractional NFTs. Now Jupiter launched in late 2021 as a swap aggregator on Solana. Now that means instead of using individual DEXs like Orca or Radium, you just head to Jupiter as a one-stop shop that sweeps across all the DEXs to help you find the best price to swap your tokens. Fantastic. Now, so successful has Jupiter become that as of now, the platform accounts for 80% of organic volume across all Solana DEXs. But Jupiter is now a lot more than just an aggregator. It does limit orders. You can DCA. It does perpetual futures. It's planning to launch its own stable coin at some point. So think of Jupiter as kind of like the, the WeChat of DeFi, right? A platform that kind of does everything. Now on Ethereum, that would be like grabbing Uniswap, 1inch, GMX, uh, DYDX, and DowMaker and rolling all of those into one and smooshing them all together and you probably still don't get everything that um, Jupiter does. Put it simply, Jupiter is at the center of Solana's DeFi ecosystem. And Solana is just, I gotta say, an absolute pleasure to use, right? It's a super fast layer one with low fees, transactions that are quick to settle, big community, a great NFT scene. So it's no surprise that Solana seen a really big resurgence since the FTX doldrums a year ago with Solana up, the sole price up 15X times then, which is fantastic. And so that makes Jupiter one of the most important products in all of crypto and Web3. It's essentially the flag bearer of DeFi 2.0 on the Solana blockchain. Now, this leads me to the Jupe token, which I covered in a recent video, but I'll give you a quick recap. So in Solana Breakpoint in September 2023 in Amsterdam, uh, Jupiter co-founder who goes by the name Miao on the internet uh, gave a big talk on Jupiter and announced the Jupe token with 40% of the supply. That's uh, 4 billion Jupe tokens to be given away in several rounds uh, to nearly a million wallets. Now, since Jupe is a governance token and Jupiter is at the center of Solana's DeFi theme, Jupe holders ultimately get to influence the direction of the Jupiter ecosystem and have a say in shaping Solana's liquidity landscape. Right. So the Jupe token is a, a bit of a milestone in Jupiter's roadmap. Now, this takes me to Jupiter's new LFG launchpad. Because you see, to get all these Jupe tokens out to so many people in the Solana community at the same time, Jupiter built its own launch pad that's designed to maximize Solana's technology, right? Technology designed to scale DeFi to millions. Now, launch pads, they're not new to crypto and Web3. You have launch pads on centralized exchanges, right? There's Binance Launchpad, which is a well known one. And you have hundreds of launch pads in DeFi as well. I've covered, um, I've done deep dives and videos on a few of the big ones. But Jupiter's launchpad is designed to show off the scalability of Solana, right? Because the team needed a platform that could support up to potentially a million wallets claiming the biggest Solana airdrop of all time <laughs> at the same time. As they say, it's often new use cases that push for new infrastructure and tools to be developed to meet that urgent need. 
And uh, at the same time, throughout Q4 2023, after the dupe token airdrop was announced, hype continued to build. And Mao was constantly hassled on Discord by the Jupiter community on uh, when token, right? When dupe, when airdrop, when, when, when. Now, crypto is a small $1 to $2 trillion market. It's open 24-7 with its biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, right? able to pump or dump in a day what takes the stock market in a year, right? Everyone lives life in the fast lane here, uh, which feeds into this culture of when this, when that, right? Remember all the when Lambo memes from the 2021 bull run. And so as a, a, a response to the community, Miao said this, last month, as a tribute to all the when boys in my Discord, DMs in my face, and in my face asking about the when airdrop, when free token, and when I will do something, I did the only thing a rational, highly stressed founder would do and wrote a love letter to all of them. And this love letter came in the form of a poem, which was, unsurprisingly, delightfully received by the community. And so that triggered a light bulb moment that became the genesis for a new meme coin because Meow thought, hey, why don't we create a meme coin called when? Because everyone's asking me when this, when that, when you, when airdrop. Right? And this can serve as a test run for this super critical launch pad that we're building heading into the dupe token launch. We'll release the meme coin on the launch pad to make sure everything's working fine and dandy before the big dupe launch. Perfect. He also wanted when to have some substance and somehow merge this when poem he wrote into the when token. But how do you combine together a, a single thing, right? A poem with crypto tokens, which are fungible and going to be owned by potentially millions of Solana users. And so the solution was to mint the poem as a fractional NFT, which can then be broken into a trillion meme coin tokens. Now, if you're a bit confused by this, let me explain how that works. So Bitcoin, Ether, right? The cash in your wallet are fungible, right? If I give you a $20 note from my wallet and you give me back a different $20 note from your wallet, and we each still have $20. It's worth the same for all practical purposes. It's the same, right? These are all fungible assets. Um, assets that can be replaced by something equivalent. Now, NFTs, they're non-fungible assets on a blockchain, right? They're unique. So if I give you a step and shoe from my wallet and you give me a step and shoe from your wallet, there's a small chance that our shoes might work the same in the game because they have the same slots, same stats, right? So they might have the exact same earning potential, but they are different shoes. They're not the same, right? They're different digital assets on the blockchain. And so you probably think that NFTs, which are unique things, they're not divisible, right? But like real world assets, you can fractionalize NFTs, you can divide them up. Because what you can do is cut an NFT into thousands, millions, even billions of fungible tokens. The technology has been around for a few years now. And uh, certainly during the, the last bull run where the NFT scene was uh, pretty much only on Ethereum. Right. With enough knowledge and skills, you could grab an ERC721 token, right? So that was the standard for NFTs, for ETH. Um, you can fractionalize that into lots of fungible ERC20 tokens and then have the original NFT locked up in a vault. Now that then raises the question, why would you do this, right? Why carve a unique asset into many pieces in the first place? Are there really that many use cases for this? Well, there are four reasons to fractionalize NFTs and let's briefly go through those. So benefit number one is democratization, right? So think of a CryptoPunk or a Board 8 Yacht Club NFT costing up to potentially thousands of Ether, expensive as hell, but fractional NFTs give holders fractional ownership of the NFT, which means letting a lot more people gain exposure to that NFT, particularly the more expensive NFTs, um, which you can't afford to buy outright. This then leads to the second benefit, which is liquidity. Democratizing the ownership of an NFT means more people can become NFT owners, which brings more liquidity into the market. Um, third reason is price discovery. So expensive NFTs often have limited or no transaction history, uh, which kind of makes it hard to work out their fair price. So fractionalizing that NFT makes it more affordable which means more people trading it, which means being able to work out what they're worth a lot easier. 
Now, what's interesting is the relationship between the price of the fungible tokens and the underlying NFT. Fractionalization, it brings liquidity into what can be a notoriously illiquid NFT market, which means you'll find the value of the fungible tokens can actually deviate away from the value of the NFT itself. And then this can then drive up or down the price of the underlying NFT, and it becomes this continuous feedback loop. Let me give you an example. Now, in 2021, a DAO, um, please a DAO, there are a bunch of investors, they bought the Doge NFT for almost 1,700 ETH, which back then was worth about $4 million. They then fractionalized the NFT into fungible dog tokens, and this allowed a whole lot of people to suddenly gain indirect exposure to the Doge NFT. Now this then blew up the price of the original NFT from $4 million um, <laughs> all the way to a whopping 225 million, right? So 50X price appreciation for an NFT. Interesting stuff, really shows what can happen when you democratize the ownership of exclusive assets to the masses. More people come in, which then drives exposure, which then drives more liquidity. Everyone wins, well, except for those that perhaps get in a bit too late. Now, speaking of exposure, uh, the fourth benefit of fractional NFTs is increased visibility for creators because NFT creators who fractionalize an NFT or have it fractionalized by others can then gain greater exposure and a bigger audience to their work in a more liquid market. Right? It's like a musician having more of their music being discovered, right? a painter having more of their painting seen. Good NFT projects often comprise a combination of entrepreneurs, artists, developers, marketers, right? and NFT projects are always competing with other NFT projects for visibility and exposure. All right, so with that background on fractional NFTs explained, let's go back to Miao's poem and look at how he turned that poem into the Wen meme coin. So what the team did was reach out to the Ovals NFT team. Now, these are experts on Solana for fractionalizing NFTs. And what they did was grab Miao's poem. They minted it as a single NFT, right? and then they fractionalize it into a trillion fungible tokens. And that's what the WEM tokens are, right? By the way, this is their platform. I'll talk more about it soon. Now, when you own a meme token, which is the single WEM token, uh, you have one one trillionth ownership of Meow's poem on the blockchain, right? So in theory, if you owned all the WEM tokens, uh, you'll own the complete NFT, the complete poem even though that is um, actually impossible now as the team has burnt um, all of the unclaimed WEN because you had a three-day window on Jupiter's launch pad to claim your WEN tokens. Um, I'll link this useful dashboard in the descriptions where you can check out all the juicy on-chain data. Now, what's even more exciting is that the NFT poem was fractionalized using a, a new lightweight NFT standard on Solana called the WEN New Standard. WNS, which took advantage of 13 new token extensions the Solana blockchain devs deployed just last week. Right, the first use case to do so as well. So under the hood, WEN is a lot more than just a meme coin. Right? It's a pioneering proof of concept uh, for the latest Solana technology. Um, as of now, right, WEN has been given out. It's been seeded into the Solana community via Jupiter's launch pad. It was largely successful and going to the future when is going to be taken care of by the WEN Foundation, right, which is managed by the Ovals NFT community. Now, the ongoing mission for, for WEN is giving back to the Solana community by supporting the development of, of um, public goods and showcasing really what's possible on Solana. So right now, there's no, I got to say, immediate narrative happening now that the meme coin is out. But as time goes on, I would be surprised if some of the big ticket Solana news has something to do with when, um, which might then have an impact on price action and liquidity. All right, so in a nutshell, you can think of the when meme coin as something very serious colliding with something very fun, kind of like Barbie Heimer. You've got the serious side of when, stress testing the Jupiter launch pad for the biggest Solana airdrop in history. You've got the first community-based coin that was built using a fractional NFT. You've got a meme coin showcasing the latest Solana NFT standards. And then there's the fun side of when. <clears throat> when, 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 when culture, right? You've got a meme-worthy poem that was penned with love to the community by none other than one of the leading pioneers on Solana, building the Jupiter DeFi ecosystem. 
and you got cute cats as mascots, right? Um, in fact, Solana now has both flagship cats and dogs. When is the cat? And you've got Bonk, which is the dog. All right now, before I move on to talking about blue chip meme coins and price action, just want to quickly show you guys what fractionalizing an NFT looks like using the Overwolves platform. My guess is that most viewers probably haven't played with fractionalizing NFTs before. So here I am on the Overwolves platform. Now you can do a bunch of things, um, but in particular, I can fractionalize a number of blue chip NFTs uh, on Solana, including Clanosaurs. Uh, you got Mad Lads as well, Famous Fox Federation, um, Oval, Ovals have their own NFT collection as well. So what I can do is I can scroll down and what I'm going to do is click on fractionalize. <clears throat> now I've currently got a wallet um, connected to the platform, which uh, has a single Clanosaur on it worth about uh, 38, 40 soul. I can then split this Clanosaur NFT into a thousand fungible clay tokens on the Solana blockchain. And during this process, my Clanosaur's NFT is going to run through some smart contract and then be locked up in a vault. And so then, instead of a single unique Clanosaur's NFT, I've got a bunch of fungible tokens representing that Clanosaur's um, that can then be shared around the blockchain. Very interesting. Um, if Clanosaur's, that are, which I'm, I am a quite bullish on, if they can execute on their goals to become a, a big IP in the real world, and say their NFTs end up becoming worth hundreds, maybe even thousands of soul one day, um, not financial advice, of course, then this kind of technology, fractionalizing these big NFTs, big expensive NFTs, um, it could just be the future, right? This kind of technology might be the main way ordinary people gain exposure to, say, the Klano's um, NFT collection in the future because they've become too expensive to buy outright. Just a thought. All right, now I want to talk about whether when has the potential to become what I call a blue chip meme coin. Now I'm going to refer to an article that I just published on my blog about when uh, fractional NFTs, meme coins, and so on. I'll link that down below. So meme coins are generally the furthest things away from being a blue chip, right? They're usually among the riskiest of risk on assets within crypto, where you want to get in, make a quick buck, and get the hell out, right? Well, there are certain meme coins with so much weight, exposure, and goodwill behind it that they almost always pump with the markets during a bull rally, outperforming other serious old coins, especially if you're able to accumulate the meme coin at a pretty good price. Now, examples of these kind of uh, proven, I guess you can say, blue chip meme coins include a Doge during the 2021 bull market, um, perhaps Shiba Inu, Right, both of these are on the Ethereum blockchain. And then you have Bonk on the Solana blockchain, which went sideways for most of 2023 after its uh, really good launch uh, before doing a massive 200x right, alongside Solana's own 15x rally from its $8 low all the way up to around $130. Just absolutely crazy. So what does it take for an ordinary meme coin to become blue chip? Now I have a system called the four C's, which I talked about in this article. Let me find it. Here we go. Right. So there are four tenets to the four C's system. Kunt, um, <laughs> which actually means a story or a narrative. Um, it's a French word. Culture, credibility, and community. And I argue that if you nail all four, then you might be looking at a meme coin that you can have long-term confidence in, right? What I call a, a, a blue chip meme coin. Now let's dive into each of these C's and, and look at what they mean. Tenant number one, quant. Precarious word, or at least the pronunciation is for English speakers. But as I just mentioned, it's a French word for story, right? Does the meme coin have some sort of narrative that you can get behind? Doesn't matter if the narrative is in fact, fact or fiction, as long as it has some compelling narrative. Now, zooming out a bit, you can argue that crypto is built on narratives, right, which plays an outsized role in determining the price of a cryptocurrency. Because unlike traditional equities, i.e. stocks, where you can use a variety of methods like the discounted cash flow model, um, price to book ratio, price to earnings ratio, 
um, price to earnings growth ratio, PEG, and so on. We don't have these sorts of things in crypto, right? The price is simply determined by market buy side pressure versus market sell side pressure at a given time. And current narratives can really drive that buy side pressure versus that sell side pressure. Now, an example of a strong narrative was the Bitcoin spot ETF, right? These rumors, which pretty much single-handedly carried Bitcoin and by extension, the entire crypto markets, um, all the way through Q4 2023, with Bitcoin peaking at 48K before the current pullback. With meme coins, you typically have no real fundamentals. Right? It's a meme. It's funny. Maybe you can do some staking. Maybe there's a roadmap, 99% of which won't be executed. Uh, but if a meme coin is backed by some narrative or story, something relatable, right? It can really help distinguish that meme coin from the rest of the pack. So for Dogecoin, back in 2021, right? The narrative was that Doge was tied to Elon Musk's endeavors. Right? He even floated using Doge on Mars. And that's why I'm on the hundreds of dog themed coins that Doge inspired back then. You had ones like Doge Elon Mars, a token that um, had tried to improve a narrative to help drive liquidity and buyers. Now looking at Bonk on Solana, that was a community coin that uh, uh, was tied to the very essence of Solana's resilience, right? Emerging in the wake of the FDX collapse in December 2022, when Solana hit a uh, pretty depressing $8. And uh, some were worried that Solana was pretty much dead. Right? I did a big video on Bonk a year ago where I dived into uh, the meme coin's wholesome story. Now, as for when, there are multiple narratives attached to its origin story alone. You've got when's relationship with Jupiter, right, being the tokenization of a poem written by Jupiter's prolific co-founder, lovingly dedicated to the Solana community. You've got when's relationship with the Let's F and Go launch pad, right, being the little brother token to Jupe, and given away just ahead of the Jupe launch to stress test that the platform and Solana can indeed handle a million wallets claiming at around the same time. And you've got Wen's relationship with Solana Innovation, right? Being a fractional NFT that's built on a brand new NFT standard, leveraging brand new blockchain features that the Solana dev team had just released. So Wen boasts multiple intersecting narratives that's heavily tied to the ethos of Solana. So for Kunt, I give it a tick there. And I do look forward to seeing new narratives that the WEN Foundation can develop going into the future. Second tenet for blue chip meme coins, the culture. How meme worthy is it? It is a meme coin after all. Now, some of the best meme coin traders argue that you want the token to have a, a catchy meme worthy name. Examples, Doge, Bonk, Bona, Chonky, Pepe. On this front, when I think auto wins with when Lambo, when this, when that being a quintessentially crypto meme um, for several years now, <clears throat> right? When dupe, when launchpad, when, when. I'm actually a bit surprised that a when meme coin hasn't exploded earlier. And on the visual front, when doesn't disappoint. You've got a very cute cat. The design is really nice and cute. Look, I think this, this kind of stuff really does matter, especially for a meme coin. Um, and also this ties into a larger story arc, which is that we've now got when the cat which sits alongside Bonk the dog. The third tenet is credibility. The riskiest meme coins are those that kind of just pop up out of nowhere, um, built by wholly anonymous teams, perhaps backed by hollow roadmaps that you know will never happen, um, and social media accounts pumping the token with meme-worthy posts until an eventual slow rug. Right? And by then, you better hope that A, you didn't join in on the party too late, and B, you've taken your initial investment out. Now, in contrast, blue chip meme coins, right, are either tied to trustworthy, well-known individuals or teams, and they have strong community backing. So for example, Doge is associated with Elon Musk, the world's most prolific entrepreneur, and Wen is tied to Weirmao, right, the co-founder of Jupiter. It is his poem, after all, from which the Wen meme coin was created. And uh, the WEN Foundation, which is going to take care of the WEN token going forward, 
That is, as we mentioned before, ran by the Ovals NFT team, right? This is a reputable team that's pioneering NFT fractionalization technology on Solana. And yeah, when happens to be meme coin that was created and uh, is supported by some of the biggest innovators in crypto, man, that is a good association to have. Finally, tenant number four, community. How much community backing does the meme coin have? Is it only known by a small niche? Is it being pumped hard by individuals who are desperate to make a profit and then get out before it all falls apart? Or is it something with a chain-wide profile? Ideally, crypto market-wide profile. Everyone knows about the meme coin. And ideally, it's backed by a noble cause of some sort, right? That's got the support and goodwill of the community at large. Also, how equitable is the token distribution? Is it in the hands of a lot of people, most of the community, right? Or is the meme coin most of the supply tied up with a small group of individuals who can fast or slow rug you at any time? Now, Doge was known by everyone in the 2021 bull run because it had Elon Musk behind it. Back then, um, Elon's words essentially pumped or dumped markets pretty hard, uh, such as when Tesla announced that they've had bought Bitcoin, the markets love that. And later when Tesla announced they're going to stop taking payments in Bitcoin, the markets didn't like that. And then after a pretty large correction, um, when Elon had gotten together with Jack Dorsey and Kathy Woods to say some nice things about Bitcoin, and then that kicked off the market's final rally to good old 69k. Now, what about Bonk? So Bonk was a free airdrop, right, to the Solana community. It was meant to bring everyone together during some pretty dark times, right, back when Solana hits a pretty low low of $8. Now, as a result, there remains an enormous amount of goodwill towards Bonk by the Solana community. Right? Some in Solana, um, some in the community, they, they, they actually regularly DCA into Bonk, like they do with serious projects and other layer ones. So it really has, Bonk really has transcended its reputation as just a meme coin um, due to its community rep, its origin story, and how Bonk use cases have been heavily embedded across various Solana dApps. What about when though? Well, in an effort to seed when across the entire Solana community, the Jupiter team gave away when equally to over a million Solana wallets, like covering a wide range of Solana users, right, from those who have used Jupiter to do token swaps, uh, to users holding top NFT collections, to Genesis Saga holders, right? with the rest of the WEN supply then quickly burnt. So the idea was to get the WEN token out as quickly as possible into all the corners of the Solana community and then let it be owned by the community. Now, from an ethos point of view, this kind of reminds me of, I guess you can call it Bitcoin's immaculate conception, right? The idea that Satoshi just dropped Bitcoin into the world, uh, ensuring that it's widely decentralized, that it's working, and then simply vanished, which is in stark contrast to many altcoins uh, many layer ones, layer twos, which took off thanks to VC money and is thus possibly subject to ongoing influence by um, venture capitalists and certain groups of people. So something you can see from this infographic here, uh, Bitcoin is free of that influence thanks to its, I guess, immaculate conception um, and uh, authentically community driven meme coins like when, like Bonk, are trying to mimic this ethos by getting the vast majority of tokens out quickly um, and for free right into the hands of the community and uh, and then quickly backing off and uh, letting the community have a big say in driving the project forward all right last part of the video probably what you've all been waiting for the price predictions now before i dive in i do want to stress a few things this is crypto Right. We don't have traditional methods of valuation and prediction that the stock market does, something I covered earlier, right? We don't have the discounted cash flow model, P ratios, PB ratios, PEG, and so on. We've got fuzzy metrics like network effect, hash rate, the number of dApps, developer activity, things that are more loose when it comes to determining the value of an asset. Crypto is a space that's ultimately driven by narratives, it all comes down to market buy side pressure versus market sell side pressure, right? And this can change on a dime if suddenly there's some new narrative out. Um, making things even more risky is that when ultimately 
is still a meme coin. All right, so don't take any of what I'm about to say to the bank. Um, I'm going to show you some projections based on what I consider to be reasonable and simple metrics. It's market cap, price ratios, market dominance, and this can give you an idea of what's possible when it comes to price. These are standard techniques used by investors and traders. Also, I'm not going to dive too hard into every number because all the details um, and all the diagrams I'm going to be showing you from here can be found in uh, my blog post on this subject where I explain what the metrics mean, what the numbers mean. So check it out, the details are in here. All right, market cap. So this is a basic staple tool for valuing crypto prices by looking at the um, combined amount of money that's sitting in the asset. Now, a couple of years ago during the 2021 bull, um, you might remember uh, Shiba Inu investors. Um, if you look at the Shiba price, it's got a lot of zeros um, in the price. They were getting excited about their token hitting potentially a dollar right now. A quick market cap check. So this is from an article I wrote about SHIB at the time. Uh, will tell you that that's just not possible because you're looking at a 400 trillion dollar market cap. Right, 400 trillion dollars needed to be thrown into Shiba Inu, which was actually more money than all of the real estate in the world put together. And real estate is by far the biggest asset class of them all. In fact, 400 trillion dollars, that's more money than all of the US dollars in circulation 20 times over. Right, so market cap, it's great for sanity checks as well, as I've spoken and written about. Now, going back to this table here, market cap forecasts, fund predictions for the WEN token. Um, the first row here is where we currently are at, right? So the total market cap, 1.6 trillion. Um, and then you've got the, some numbers for the WEN token, the market cap and the current price. The next three rows are the projections, right? And what I've done is assume that when is going to be a blue chip meme coin, right? So let's say we're happy with that assumption, which means that we're going to assume it's going to pump pretty hard in a bull market. So then if when hits the valuations that the other blue chip meme coins, we've already discussed Doge, Sheeb, um, Bonk, right? If when can hit the valuations, those meme coins hit, what would WEN be worth? What would its price be? How much upside is there? Well, looking at Bonk, Bonk hit a 1.5 billion market cap uh, towards the end of 2023. I think it was actually Christmas Day um, when Bonk hit its all-time high. Now, if WEN can also hit 1.5 billion, you're looking at a 41x from where we are today. Now, keep in mind that the price is currently um, this number here. And uh, if one, uh, if when has dumped since this video, you might be watching this video days, weeks, months from now, um, the upside is even greater. Now moving on, if when can hit 40 billion, right? So that's what Shiba Inu hit in the 2021 bull market, then you're looking at a 1000X. And if when can hit 80 billion, right? This is where Doge peaked doing, uh, during the same bull market, thanks Elon, then you're looking at a 2000x right interesting stuff again don't take any of this to the bank this wholly depends on your conviction on uh, in in when and whether or not you believe when has as much potential as these other um, high profile or blue chip meme coins all right next up analyses based on price ratios now here i focus on the when to sell price ratio so essentially i'm valuing the project WEN against its wider ecosystem of Solana, the blockchain that WEN is being built on. Now, if you haven't seen price ratios before, investors and traders do use them all the time. So you might've seen the, the ETH to BCC ratio. Right, so this tells you when Ether is performing better against Bitcoin, right? So either um, this happens when Ether's price is rising quicker than Bitcoin's um, or Ether is bleeding pulling back slower than Bitcoin's price. Now we usually see this ratio go up during a bull market. Um, as investors and traders, they take on a more risk on profile and rotate Bitcoin profits into Ethereum so that 
Ethereum ends up pumping harder against Bitcoin. And then you have situations where uh, when ETH is bleeding against Bitcoin, right? For example, here and here. Um, and this trend tends to happen over the long run during bear markets as investors go risk off and try to seek refuge into safe haven assets, right? Bitcoin, stable coins, even bonds, right? As is the case these couple of years um, due to inflation and central banks reducing their balance sheets, basically yanking liquidity out of the system. Now, um, if you want, feel free to check out my uh, macro guide for crypto investors where I talk about economic cycles, um, secular bull and bear markets, um, central banks and monetary policy, all that stuff that you need to understand as a crypto investor in a real bear market when central banks uh, are not on your side, which is right now, right? And it's why you find an increasing number of crypto investors um, these days pulling themselves out of the crypto bubble to learn more about the stock market, the bonds market, macroeconomics. So feel free to check that out. I'll link it down below. Okay, so back to price ratios with when against Sol. So looking at the table here, if we focused on the first row, right, this is where we are today. Solana is roughly $100 and the when Sol ratio, so this is the price of the when token divided by the price of Solana, is currently sitting at, see this six here, this subscript six, six zeros, zero point zero 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 five eight. Six zeros. The other rows below are, are the price projections. So here I've presented three scenarios, normal, bullish, and bearish conditions. Let's go through them. So in the normal scenario, I assume that we return back to the 2021 bull run peak. So there, if you remember, uh, the whole market hit 3 trillion, a 3 trillion valuation market cap. Um, Solana hit an all-time high of $260, right? Which, um, so I think this normal scenario assumption is, is, is pretty reasonable. Now, in this situation, judging from history, um, top MEEP coins, they're gonna, I think, perhaps pump pretty hard. Um, and what I've assumed is that the WEN token is gonna pump 10 times against Solana. That's why the subscript goes down by one, one zero gets slashed off. And what that means is the price of WEN is going to become 0.15 cents, which corresponds to a market cap of around a billion, right? Which ultimately means about a 25x from where we are today. Now, quick note, if you do believe in WEN, um, if you believe in uh, how the WEN Foundation is going to move the WEN token forward, um, and that WEN is able to retain a lot of the goodwill and momentum that it currently has, uh, you might think that a 25x is perhaps a bit conservative looking at the current really low market cap, right? Because Bonk already hit a 1.5 billion valuation, right? It's, it's already more than a billion. And Shiba Inu and Doge hit way higher, whole magnitude, order of magnitude higher. <clears throat> but anyway, this is what I have for the normal scenario. Okay, focusing on the bullish case now. So here I assume that the original projection that many people expected the 2021 bull market to hit, right, where the whole market hit a, w w was hopefully going to hit a 10 trillion market cap. Um, and, and that essentially meant that Bitcoin was going to go to 150K, maybe even 200, 300K. Solana goes to $1,000 or more. And in this case, in this scenario, I assume that the WEN token, currently a low small cap, not just a small cap, a low small cap, can do a 100x against the soul, right? Which is why two zeros vanish. The six becomes a four. These subscripts here, six becomes four. And then this would value when to be at about 36 billion, right? Market cap, which um, which is actually still lower than, than Shiba Inu and Doge. It's lower than their all-time highs in the 2021 bull, right? So... I think it's reasonable in a, a melt your face off bull market. Um, and if that happens, you're looking at a 1000 X from where we are today. Finally, bearish. Okay. So going the other way, um, at the other end of the, the spectrum, what can we get? So here I assume the current bearish macro conditions 
do actually eventuate into a recession, maybe even stagflation, right? Which is what historically reliable macro indicators like the bond yield curve actually does perhaps hint. Um, so that's this curve here. So in, in my macro article, right, this curve. So basically this, the, the bond yield curve, it, it compares longer with shorter length bond yields. And this curve here has been a staple recession indicator for, for economics, eco economists um, and stock market investors for decades. Now in this situation, basically I assume the whole market dies back down to a um, trillion dollars, right? Which isn't actually, I mean, the, the current market cap, total crypto market cap is only 1.6 trillion. So I think I'm being um, a little bit conservative in, in a real stagflation situation. I think the crypto market cap can definitely go uh, lower than this. Um, anyway, we assume the market dives down to a trillion. Bitcoin will then go below 30K again, most likely. Solana, I assume, goes back down to $20. Um, and all the risky alts basically just plummet, right? And we end up with when becoming a, a micro cap, right? Basically less than a million dollar market cap, becomes a micro cap altcoin. Uh, and this essentially means that it's gonna be a 90% drawdown or more from the current prices. So, uh, three projections covering both uh, melt your face off bullish conditions and bearish conditions that some macro analysts are betting on looking at some of the data. And look, I think the main takeaway uh, here, looking at these numbers is that, um, you know, I, and, and these are not numbers I pulled out of a hat. These are, are, are numbers that I made arguments for by doing some calculations um, using some, I think, reasonable assumptions, right? I think the lesson here is that this meme coin stuff is risky stuff, right? Even if it's a blue a, a blue chip meme coin, it's risky stuff. Anything can happen. All right, final approach is relative market dominance, right? Which mathematically works out to be pretty similar to the price ratio approach we saw earlier. We're still taking ratios. Um, instead of taking the ratio of token prices, the price of when divided by the price of sold, uh, we're going to be dividing the, the market dominance of when by the market dominance of soul. Now the benefit of doing this is you end up with numbers that are more intuitive to understand. Um, let me show you a quick example. So if we, if we head back to the ETH to BTC ratio again, back in 2017, if I tell you that the ETH to BTC price ratio hit 0.15, right? it's just a number. What does that mean? It doesn't really mean much. The price of Ethereum divided by the price of Bitcoin was 0.15. It's just an abstract number, right? The usefulness of this chart isn't based on points in time. It really comes down to changes over time, right? When is it going up? Which, when, which is when Ethereum is outpacing Bitcoin um, and when it's going down, right? Which is when ETH, the price of ETH is bleeding against Bitcoin. But now if I show you this chart, Right, which is the ETH dominance to BTC dominance chart. Right, you grab the dominance of Ethereum and divide it by the dominance of Bitcoin. This is actually mathematically the same as dividing ETH's market cap to BTC's market cap, by the way. You end up with a similar picture as before. Right, they're quite similar. The variations really just come down to um, the supplies of the two tokens, the Ether and Bitcoin, fluctuating a little bit. But now this chart, this it, it, the, the outcome is that I can interpret this chart a lot easier and at any point in time, in isolation. So for example, right now, um, the 32% that's being reported today, right, it's telling me that Ether's valuation Right, its market cap is 32% of Bitcoins. That's something I can make sense of. I also know if I zoom out a little bit, right, that when this chart hits 100%, that's when the flippening happens, when Ethereum flips Bitcoin, because that's when the Ethereum market cap is finally going to hit Bitcoin's market cap. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. 
let's dive back into our table, comparing the market dominance of Wen against Solana. All right, so the first row, right, that is where we are currently. Sol's $100, that translates to roughly a 43 billion market cap. Divide that by the total crypto market cap and you end up with the Solana dominance of around 2.6% at the moment. Right, in other words, 2.6% of money in crypto at the moment is sitting in the Sol token. And we also know that Wen's market cap, a small 36 mil, it turns out to be just 0.083% of Solana's, right? Divide 36 million by 43 billion and you get this number here. And now we move on to our projections, right? We have our normal bullish and bearish situations that roughly correspond to the, the price ratios that we looked at earlier. Um, the, the assumptions are going to be very, very similar. So in the normal scenario, like before, we assume that the crypto market cap and Solana end up hitting the 2021 bull, nu bull run numbers. I'm then going to assume that Wen can grab a valuation that is a whole percent of Solana's valuation. In other words, the market cap of Wen can hit 1% of Sol's. In that situation, we end up with essentially a 20x from where we are today. And this corresponds to Wen hitting a market cap of around 780 mil, right? Still lower than 1 billion. I don't think that's unreasonable. Again, if you look at SHIB and Doge during the 21 bull run, um, SHIB and Doge hit market caps that are 50 to 100 times greater than what I'm proposing here, right? So if you think 20x isn't doable from where we are today, um, I, I guess that means you might believe that when might go nowhere, right? Which is fair enough. Feel free to let me know in the comments why I'm interested to hear everyone's opinions. All right, moving on to the bull scenario. So here the, the whole market, just like with the price ratio situation uh, assumptions earlier, I assume the whole market goes to 10 trillion. And I assume that, and here I, I'm going to assume that Solana can grow its market dominance. It can double it to 5%, from 2.6% to 5%. Why? Well, it basically comes down to me being a, a Solana believer. Right? I've been using Solana every day for quite a while now. There are a number of apps that I use every day on it. Um, what's being built on Solana, the community, uh, the technology, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly bullish on Solana. Right, moving on, uh, I'm going to assume that in a euphoric peak, I assume that Wen can do a big blow off top, hitting a market cap that's speculating perhaps one tenth of souls. Now, if you don't think that's reasonable, in the 21 bull run, right, at Doge's peak, Doge actually hit, so we know Doge hit a market cap of 82 billion. Ethereum's market cap was about 400 billion at that time, right? 83 divided by 400. Doge's valuation actually hit 20% of Ethers, right? This is what blue chip meme coins can do in the right market conditions, right? So just keep that in mind. Okay, so moving to the bear case. Um, now, so this corresponds to, just like with the price ratio approach earlier, this corresponds to a recessionary macro environment, right? or maybe some sort of bad, really bad black swan event for crypto. Um, here I assume the markets dive down to 1 trillion again. Um, Sol's market cap dives down to 6 billion, basically that translates to dipping under $20. And we assume that when's market dominance, right? really dives against souls, just like most other old coins in a situation like this. And that'll end up giving us a when market cap of about a million, which translates to again, a 90% plus drawdown from where we are today. So again, three projections, something very bullish, something not so bullish, right? Something bearish and something in between. The possibilities, as you can see, are quite wide. All right, folks, I think I'll leave it here. I think I've rambled on long enough. If you found this content useful at all, please help me out and hit that like button 
and drop a comment. These longer videos do take a lot of time to prepare and make. Uh, a lot of energy goes into this, so do let me know what you enjoyed, um, other projects that you think I should uh, dive into, and consider subscribing if you haven't. Alright, stay safe, keep learning, and always watch your risk. I'll see you guys next time.